Right, good evening everybody, a very warm welcome to Solihull Moors for this uh, fans Q&A. And those at the back, there are plenty of seats if you'd like to come and join us. I would ask you now, if you've got any questions, you think of questions, get them ready, put your hands up and we will come out to you eventually. But we've got a little bit to get through first, but then we will come out to you. Just to introduce, I'm sure you, you know who they are. We've got right in the centre, we've got the chairman, Darrell Eels. To his left, Gary Wilde, the assistant. We've also got um, Kelvin Barnett here, the chief executive. And we have, as well, Kyle Storer, the captain. Well, that went down like a lead balloon. Kyle, you must have had a right beach to your last game. I've got to... And next to him, of course, we've got the manager. And what a job he's done, Tim Flowers. Brilliant. Throughout the evening, we will, there will be one or two things we're going we're gonna to tell you, but Rich Blackmore, as well, the operations director, he'll be going up to tell, talk about what's going to happen as well. And he, he looks ever so pleased about that. You didn't know, did you? Yes, you are. <laughs> right. Um, just firstly, then, if, if we can, now, let's start with the chairman. And just about the journey so far, where is it in your plans? And, and just tell us a little bit about your plans and your, your aims. Uh, well, the first thing to say is that Tim Flowers does not follow instructions. <laughs> my, my first conversation was, please don't get relegated this season. <laughs> um, <clears throat> no, seriously, I, 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 I mean, I'm pinching myself. I, 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 I'm an optimist in life, but what's happened this season is um, sort of astonishing in many ways, and I think it's credit to team, the coaching team and a fantastic squad of players and, it, and it's also the triumph of team spirit and togetherness and I think I'd like to think one of the things that, that Calvin and myself tried to do is make, make a club a whole club, it's about everyone and everyone's on the same side, supporters this season have been absolutely fantastic um, and we we'll keep dreaming because you, you never know what will happen in the next three months. <laughs> Tim, just come to the, the manager. Tim, y your reputation in the game is well known, but have you been a little bit surprised at what's been achieved so far? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, without being flippant, yes, definitely. I, I thought we were hoping for, uh, to improve on last season. That was the plan because uh, from sort of when Yatesy and, and Gaz and, and me came in, uh, just before Christmas and obviously the results picked up um, we, we were allowed by the board to bring some better players in there was no doubt that with all you know being disrespectful to the, some of the lads that were, they weren't good enough for this level um, we managed to get together a squad that clearly was um, managed to get over the line <clears throat> and then the plan was to build on that clearly and some left in the in the summer and obviously we got some, some very very good players in as well uh, which in my opinion vastly improved that squad from last year, we're a better team, uh, we've got better players, uh, I think we've had that time now together so we're better organised, um, but to be sitting third in the National League now coming into the, well, the last third of the season is far beyond our expectations, but, but that doesn't mean to say that uh, we now look at it and we've played everybody, some twice, do we fear anybody, no not at all, we uh, respect them all, but I don't think there's a better team and better squad, and I say this to the lads, in the division. Now, whether we can go and achieve what, what we hope to, who knows, but it's still a massive step forward. But uh, we're in there swinging with 15 games to go for sure. Bringing good players in is a massive part of it. But even when you get those players, there's a lot more to it, isn't there? You've got to organise them, you've got to get them, they've got to have the right attitude, they've got to believe, they've got to have all those things. Yeah, I, I think going, um, we were two evenings a week, last season, a Tuesday and a Thursday when we first came in and uh, we changed that straight away to, to three mornings. Some of the lads then had jobs etc and um, we managed to sort of get round that. Um, a lot of the lads committed and some then disappeared um, to be replaced by better. Um, but yeah, there is, and, but being able to train three mornings a week we, we were able to get fitter, um, obviously get more organised, um, recruit better players. Uh, and there were some structures to the club, you know, it, and it's grown slowly, you know, things like a code of conduct and um, uh, now all of a sudden, you know, we've, we've got um, a recruitment analysis, 
Uh, we're going to get strength and conditioning very shortly. You know, we're, we're now becoming a much more like what you'd be considering a, you know, a full-time professional football club. Um, uh, all we, in essence, all we're doing really is training one less day than everybody else. Having said that, um, our injury record this year has been outstanding and maybe the rest uh, for that, yeah, touch wood, absolutely, but the, the rest for that extra day has done the boys good because it hasn't affected fitness because we're still scoring goals in the last kick of the game to win football matches. Uh, but we've managed to avoid, as I say, touch with long, long-term injuries, which has been key for us. How important is your back room? Massive, massive. Clearly, <coughs> I've known Gary for a long, long time. Um, I, I work for Gary at, at Kidderminster and a number of guys. Is um, when Steve Burr was there as a goalie coach, and then I was assisting Gaz there for on a couple of occasions. If there's a player in the non-league around this area that he doesn't know, then he ain't worth bothering about. To be honest with you. Um, huge in terms of re recruitment, in terms of tapping into um, the, the word on the street, where's the next 16, 17 year old wonder kid coming from. Uh, we've got one or two that are out on loan, that are, are they here because of gas. Um, fell right on my feet, if I'm honest, with um, a lad, because we needed another coaching. So I, I was doing a bit of it last year. Um, a lad called James Quinn, who stepped up from the academy, has been fantastic. I mean, I haven't seen the same session twice yet, and he's been going all season. I think the lads even joked the other day, he did his first one for the second time, and we're in, in, approaching February. And it's, he's been uh, fantastic. He's good for spirit. Uh, everything's upbeat, it's varied. Uh, obviously, listen, you, you want to do your nuts and bolts of your team play, but the lads want to come in and think, oh, we're doing that today, or we're doing that today. It's very varied, and we like to think it is. Uh, we like to do our due diligence on the opposition. We don't want to bore them to death and think they're we're going to play Real Madrid on Saturday by over-egging it, but we, I mean, we let them know bits and parts about what we're up against. But um, that, that backroom staff, Craig Cope, now has come on as analysis, head of the, you know, I can't even say it, analysis, um, who's been um, super as well. You know, he gives us a lot of um, uh, information on players and, and opposition, so they're key as well. Yeah. Everything's professional. Yeah, with, you know, if we added a Friday to it, then... We're, we're a professional football club, in my opinion. Yeah, the way the players conduct themselves, the way everything's geared up for them to try and succeed, and that will improve. As I say, we've got strength and conditioning. There will be other stuff coming along, and it, you can't just do it all at once. But we're slowly but surely trying to build it. Yeah. Get bring Gary in if we can. Gary, just talk, talk to us about. He's just built you up big there about your knowledge of non-league and recruitment. Is that your forte? I'd like to I think so. I've been fortunate to you know have lads come in. And, and do well and gone on. It's probably three or four in the championship now and, and lower down. But I think with recruitment, sometimes it's easy to, to spot a good player. Um, but the big thing for us is they've got to be a good person as well. Uh, so attitude it. is vital. Absolutely. And, and what they like around the place. And to be fair to the lads who are here tonight and the squad we've got, they are all good players and they're good people as well. And you can see that, you know, in training day in, day out. So that's an important thing for me, just scratch below the surface and see what the players are like, other than just the football side of it. How difficult at this level is it to go and find players to improve your squad? Because that's, the, you, I suppose, your continual aim, isn't it? Yeah, it's more difficult this season because we're doing well uh, and there's a lot of good players here. And as I say, that's when you have to look a little bit deeper, you know, about the ones you're bringing in. Are they going to fit in with the lads in the dressing room? Obviously, you don't want a bad egg coming in and stuff. So, yeah, it becomes harder when you're doing well. Um, but at the moment, you know, the club's in a good place and, and it makes it a little bit easier to, to attract players. Um, we're getting calls now about players this time last year. Nobody would have been contacting us. So I think that tells you, speaks volumes, where the club's come. Bring the skipper in if we can. Um, Kyle, Kyle. You've heard the, the manager and the assistant speak. Tell us a little bit about the, because what we don't see is the dressing room. Tell us a little bit about your dressing room. Um, just touching on what the gaffer and Gary said, um, you know, the characters in there are fantastic. Um, I think you can tell that in games that we've gone to the wire. Um, we've got characters in the dressing room that will, will drag us through. Um, you know, and recruitment to that has been fantastic because we've got the experience there now that we're players that have won the division, um, we've got players that have played higher, we've got, don't want to embarrass him, but Darren Carter's you know, played the highest level possible. Um, 
So listen, the dressing room is easy to police. Um, they're, they're a great bunch, they manage themselves. Um, and just touching on a little one that Gav said about Fridays then, I'm sure if um, when the lads that they need to do about a Friday, you know, they take care of themselves and you know they're in the gym. Um, you know, they're very professional and uh, we've not had any problems with Touchwood in the dressing rooms all season. So um, like I say, it police itself, um, you know, and they're a great bunch. Is, I mean, very important is that camaraderie, the spirit. So what's the banter like? The banter's great, um, but that obviously comes with winning games. So obviously we, we've won a lot of games this year. Um, it was tough when I come in January. Uh, I think we was eight points from safety. Um, so yeah, it was a little all over the place. There was a lot of individuals in the, in the group. Um, and I think that's been, been key this year. <coughs> We're all in it together, win, lose or draw. Um, and we fight to the wire. And like I say, um, camaraderie was great, but it only comes through winning games and being successful and touch wood. Uh, you know, there's 15 games to go, and we, we, we can have a big say on the uh, where the league title goes. Having watched you a few times this season, they look a mentally strong squad as well. You know, they dig deep for you. Yeah, like I say, it's the experience we've got in there. We've got some, um, like I say, players that won the league, but we've got we've got some talented players. You know, Jermaine Hilton, Jeremy Osborne, um, Alex Goodrew as well was here tonight. Um, players that you know help that experience out. We, we need them sort of players, and obviously Ryan Boots coming in. He's been, he's been fantastic for us this season. You know. We needed them a few times, um, but yeah, I, I think all the lads give 100%, um, and, and that's obviously key going forward. Um, obviously, fine to the wire, and we've, we've nicked a few late goals, haven't we? So, yeah, sure. that's good for us. When needs be, are they honest in the dressing room? Um, in, in what way? <laughs> we, well, if things I'm aren't, if things, uh, well, uh, that's what we want. <laughs> if things aren't quite right, are they honest with each other? Listen, they've, they've been around the block. They, they, they know they're not pulling their weight in the dressing room. Um, obviously, the gaffer and Gaz, they, they, you know, they tell us when we're going wrong. Um, you know, that door gets slammed a few times when they're not happy. Um, but the, the individuals that know, know themselves, they're not, not pulling their weight. Um, like I say, it's an honest group. So um, that's fantastic for us as well because you know, you know, when everyone's pulling rank, you know, we're a force to be uh, reckoned with. Fantastic. Well done. And, and, you know, you need a good leader in any team. And, and I think Tim's picked a great leader there as well. Um, let's bring in uh, Kelvin, if we can, as the chief exec. So we've got a chairman. We've got a chief exec. Exactly what is your role as chief executive? When we started this journey, obviously myself and Daryl have talked uh, quite a lot about this. And obviously Daryl's been there, got the T-shirt with Oxford, local lad. Um, knows everything about it. My role really was to come in and support him and when he goes out making promises I try and find a way of delivering them. It's as simple as that. Uh, <laughs> uh, but as I say when we first did the uh, fans forum uh, right at the start the, um, the one thing that we did say is that we were looking to professionalise the club both on and off the field. Uh, and on the field you've, you've just gone through what's going off and it's absolutely fantastic and you know, uh, like Tim, I'm pinching myself as well. What's going off? It's absolutely fantastic as my, my first foray into football, as it was. But off the pitch, we're doing a lot of work, and you've seen a lot of that. You know, physically, you know, we've seen the developments out the front there. You've seen, you know, the online ticketing, the car parking, you know, all, all sort of quite boring stuff compared to the first team, but really important infrastructure developments that enable us to grow the business and the football club, attract new. Uh, make the match day experience a lot better and I say Richard will go into a little bit more detail about that uh, later but you know for me it's about the harmony between the football club on the pitch and off the pitch and making sure those two work together so that we've got a thriving business self-sustaining football club moving forward that can compete in the next league. Back to Darrell if we can. Darrell with every game you win you're near the top People are already talking about the possibility of getting into the Football League. With every win comes a rise in expectations. How do you cope with that and are you ready for it? Uh, I think uh, you're probably only on this planet once, aren't you? So you might as well grasp opportunity when it arises. And I, I suppose I've I've always done that as a businessman. I, you know, you, 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 I think many people in life have opportunities but they don't actually spot them and one of the conversations Tim and I have had on numerous occasions in the last sort of couple of months is 
let's not die wondering this season. So to the extent that we can bring an extra player in <coughs> or an extra, you know or strength and conditioning or you know, we've just introduced food after training. And so it's all those marginal gains that, that what I don't want to do is I you know, if we don't go up this season or, or we finish outside the playoffs, I'll be disappointed. But I'll be more disappointed if I think we could have done that or we could have done that. And I think at the moment We've got a really, really professional and logical approach to everything that says, let's leave no stone unturned in the quest to try and maximise this season without going mad like a Salford or an Orient where you just throw money at it. Um, uh, you know, well, I think we've got a, a fantastic squad of players. I think we've got a fantastic team spirit, which, you know, at the end of the day comes from Tim. I'd like to think people like Calvin and myself bring a degree of probably professionalism, but also humour to it. That it, at the end of the day, it's a game. If you're not enjoying this, there's something the matter with you. And I say that as, you know, I'm now a solid old Norwich fan, but as a Blues fan for many years, it's generally thin followed by thin. <laughs> so this is just amazing, and I, I think, you know. The more we can get, one of the things I've said consistently is we just need to get more people to come and watch this fantastic club because we're at a, we are the, still the 20th best supported club in the National League and that puts us at such a disadvantage and you know, you see, you're those occasions like the Blackpool game, even Saturday, I thought we played bloody well on Saturday, deserved at least a point but 1500 for a Saturday game was absolutely brilliant. And if we can do that every week, get behind the team, you never know what will happen. You've got a massive catchment area anyway. I mean, all right, you've got a lot of Birmingham fans, you've got a lot of other fans in the area, but it is a big catchment area. Have you thought about working, say, with Birmingham, about opposite weeks when they're away to have an attraction for them to come here? Well, I think, historically, that's how the fixtures have been lined up. But, I, I mean, one of the things I've tried to encourage, and... and, and one of the good news is that two or three of the new shareholders are here tonight are also Villa fans. Because for me, when we are solid or moors in our own right, we are not a blue sort of junior club. And I want everybody, particularly the solid hall. I mean, solid hall's got a sort of conurbation of two hundred thousand people. That's massive to sustain a football league club. Um, so for me, the, 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 the thing we have to do is try and encourage everybody to come down and watch the club and say, right, I mean, Tim, Tim jokes about people don't like playing us and, and we've got a direct style. I don't buy that. I think what we, what we have is we have a very effective style that says don't make mistakes in your own half, but play in their half. And I, I'm probably those tinted, but I think we're as, a, we're as good a footballing side in the opposition half as anyone in this league. Without a doubt, I think what you were alluding to, and I think probably Tim has got the same view, no regrets Tim, you take the team no regrets at 90 minutes, and the chairman say the same for the club, no regrets. Yeah, I think, I think last year, we, we had a chat with the lads the other day, and last year we went in with the mentality pre-match, try and go into it, try not to lose a game. Now we go into a match trying to win it, and there's two fundamentally different things. Um, and sometimes we get undone now and again because we're looking to play fun foot football and go and win the match. Whereas last year we were probably a bit more mob handed behind the ball, a lot harder to break down at times, but created far fewer chances than we are now. I, I mean, when I see, I get stats and everything now on, on a Monday uh, regarding the previous game and, and our stats are super you know with the amount of crosses we get in the box from good areas shots on target shots off target attempts second ball regains in, in the you know the final. all the all the things that we're looking to do are, are massively massively improved so we're now actually looking to play front foot football rather than not lose a game so they're, they're fundamentally different things um, and just touching on, on what the chairman said in, in terms of so we got 15 free hits to a certain extent people didn't expect us to be where we are they expect Lake Norian to be there, they expect Salford to be there, Wrexham, all those bigoties are, are clearly have got the revenue to, to, to try and sustain that. But we're, we're the 
we're the little ones that have crept in there, um, and probably people don't like us being in there, which is great. <laughs> which is great because you know we've got a little, a little. It's us against the world a little bit from now to the end of the season. Can we go and you know smack a big, a big team on the nose? Um, and we've done that a few times this season, um, and, and we find ourselves three points off it going into the last, into well, not the last furlong, but you know coming into the last third of the season. It's a great place to be. We're we're in where we want to be. There's an argument that Salford, with their money and Lake Norian, might have better players, if you like. But sometimes, it, isn't it more about having the better team in terms of balance and everything else that goes with it? Yeah, I, I mean, listen, I, I, I would disagree. I, I honestly, I honestly think I would put the, the squad of players we've got right now up against anybody in this division. And I honestly think uh, if we can magic a one and we're up next season, they're they're more than good enough to, to cope with next season as well. They, they're not. We, we're not in a position. Of, We've recruited um, for players that I believe will get us out of this division eventually and be able to sustain the next one. So all your signings have been long term yeah, anyway? Yeah, absolutely. And, and they've been for balance, they've been for experience, some for youth, but to try and get a, a balance to the squad that can cover me on a Friday, you know, when I sort of decide what I'm going to pick, um, I'm covered with every eventuality. Now there's still a couple of positions, obviously we've been bare on Ryan Boot all season, so we've been praying really that nothing happens to him, and so far again touch wood, although we've got again a database of, of 10, 15 goalkeepers all ranked, so we know what we'd do if you know the push came to shove, uh, and sort of Jamie record a little bit, play George there, or you know, had to put a round peg in a square hole if anything happened to Jamie, he got suspended a couple of times. But other than that, I'm covered in every position on the field. I've got variation up top, I've got pace, I've got power. I've got, uh, now Hawkridge is sort of a winger, more of a winger type who can beat a man on the outside and deliver. Um, you know, I've got six foot five, uh, you know, I've got five foot six. I've got players, different types to, to choose from. In midfield, I've got runners, I've got holders who can dictate play. I've got left foot, right foot, set play delivery. You know, I've got defenders who are aggressive, can go and head the ball, and that's National League football. It's, listen, it's every league, but both boxes in this division are key. Can you defend set plays? Can you score from set plays? You know, I've got defenders who can handle the football. I've got defenders who can bomb forward and create chances for forwards. So I'm delighted where we are. We're always on the lookout for something that can improve us, otherwise we we'll wouldn't be doing our job. But um, I don't want to carry 25 players and have seven sitting on their backsides in the stand. We've purposely gone for quality rather than quantity. And I think us as a staff believe that we're, uh, we've certainly got quality in the dressing room. Well, after listening to that, it's worth a tenner, isn't it? Putting a tenner on them to go up, listening to him. <laughs> just, 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 just a fiver. I'm a believer. <laughs> <laughs> um, Chairman, you... you Darryl, you, you, you've got one or two, you're making changes all the time off the field in terms of stuff you're bringing in. Do you want to enlighten us to...? Uh, yeah, I mean, one of the things that I think Calvin said, spot on, is that, that, that if you're going to build sustainably, you've got to build the right foundations. And at the end of the day, for me, that's all about getting the right people in the right roles. Um, one of the stories I always tell is that I was involved in Formula One for three or four years and, and it is the best team sport I've ever seen because to be able to change a tyre in under two seconds it means everybody does their own job and doesn't get involved in anyone else's job and the biggest single thing in organisations from my perspective is everybody not only tries to do their own job they try to interfere with other people's jobs so you ended up you end up two and two, making three rather than five. So for me, it's all about getting people in the right roles. Um, and he doesn't like praise, but Rich Blackmore, who's our operations director, who was with me at Oxford, he is doing an utterly remarkable job in terms of improving the infrastructure of facilities. He's got me and Calvin on his back saying, you need to do that cheaper, you need to do it faster, you need to do it yesterday, why is the club shop not open? So that, by the way, out the front, that's going to be a club shop, plus club offices. Um, but more importantly, that, that if you're going to professionalise and get into the league, you need people ahead of time. So as Tim said, we're getting strength and conditioning coaching to support um, the medical side. 
we're improving the food. Uh, we've brought Craig Cope in to do the uh, recruitment and analysis, supporting Gary. But it, it's equally important to get things right um, <coughs> off the pitch. And, and one of the things I'm delighted to be able to say tonight, I can't know she's over there, is uh, Julia Shelton, who's probably known to some of you, is going to become uh, Moore's club secretary from February the 11th. Stand up, Julia. Thank you. Mike, Mike Darrell, we know Darrell and I, I know I've worked very closely with her at Birmingham City. When she left Birmingham City, I spoke to the EFL and the EFL were absolutely distraught. She's recognised as the top, top secretary in the Football League and now she's at Solihull Moors. You really are fortunate. I agree with that, Tom. And, and alongside that, next to Julia is Robin Lamb, who's... He's got the longest title in the world, but the bits I remember is that he's now head of retail. But that does mean we're going to have some merchandise. So in our new shop, we're going to have lots and lots of merchandise for everyone to buy. And of course, we talked about online ticket sales. You're doing something about that, aren't you, Kelvin? Tell us about that. Yeah, as I say, uh, right at the start, uh, first fans forum, people were talking about buying tickets online and uh, as I say, taking the club forward, it was a key thing for me to get introduced. That was introduced reasonably quickly, probably one of the best sort of IT implementations I've done, uh, together with the team here. But it's worked really well. Um, the uptake of those uh, online ticket sales for the big matches were fantastic. So, you know, when we played Blackpool or um, when we did Salford, everybody was going online to take it, which is fantastic. It sort of dipped a little bit because I think if people think they can get in on the day, then they don't need to buy the tickets in advance. But for us as a club, it makes a lot of difference if we know how many people are coming on the day. You can sort of plan better, food and beverage, car parking, etc., etc. So it really helps the organisation and efficiency of what we're doing. Um, and actually, we really want to encourage that. So we're actually, uh, for the rest of the season, we're going to reduce the prices uh, for the online ticketing. Um, so that'll be coming out on social media straight after this, this, this meeting. Um, and really just to encourage people to do that. Um, and again, as part of the online ticketing, we are looking to sort of do extra things with that in terms of additional sales uh, related to programmes where we can put bundles together and just try as much as possible to use technology to deliver things to you faster, better, cheaper, quicker. And that's, that's what we're doing. Could I ask a question, Tom? I'll yeah, can I come to with the mic with you then? Just bear with us. No worries. Here we go. No worries, pal. Okay. Sorry, Dave. No. Okay. Firstly, can I just thank the board, the manager, and the players for everything they've done? And we're moving very fast. Um, what I don't want you to do is be a victim of your own success. And the chairman's made a great point about the supporters, and you mentioned the online thing. There is a slight problem with the online thing, which happens at, at every match, it happened at Blackpool, it's happening at every match since, is that when people book online, they get a seat. It doesn't matter if they're standing, if they're sitting, they get a seat number. For the people who come to the matches for donkey's years, they have sat in the same seat for every match for the last 10 years, and get a bit upset when somebody walks in at five minutes before kickoff and says, I've got this seat, and then the stewards have to the problem of moving people. Now, this is getting worse because more people are booking online. There is a secondary problem, and I don't want to upset the old ones. You've got to sort, somehow sort it for the old and the new, but your online system doesn't it, it actually create seats that don't exist. I booked seat number 90, row D, row, row 4, sorry, Block C, there's only three rows in Block C, because the other bit's for the disabled. The seats only go up to 24, and the stewards think that they, the numbered seats go from the back, one, two, three, four, whereas your website shows the reverse, one, two, three, four from the front. Yeah. Now, it doesn't worry me, because if, unless it's full, we just go and find another seat. But as the club progresses, this situation will get worse. And at the minute, you've got new people coming in, and there were quite a few fathers came in with their kids at Floyd on Saturday, and they were a bit upset because they promised their kids a seat X place, 
So they've got upset. The old chap that's been sitting there for 10 years, he's got upset. Either of those might not come back. So I just say some, somewhere needs to be done. Thank you. Thank you. Let Calvin, over here. No, no I, absolutely. It's, it's a very good point, and uh, that was raised uh, earlier uh, in the week, and both myself, Cheryl, and Richard have been sort of talking about that. Um, we do need to get it right, and as you, as you say, as we move forward, it's likely to get... Uh, we're going to get more people, therefore the possibility of that becoming more of a problem. We do want to address it. I don't know, Rochelle, have you got anything to add to that one in terms of the online ticketing? Uh, yeah, just, I mean, for us, as part of the, as part of the Football League um, application, we have to do online ticketing. So for us, we, we did a soft launch, if I'm honest, of online ticketing. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll put my hands up, you know, um, you know, we haven't got it quite right yet. We've, we've got a few issues with um, how we get the disabled seating right, how we get the seating plan right. These are small things that we're trying to, you know, trying to iron out so that actually later in the season it, it will be, you know, completely right, it will be perfect. And then going forward for everybody at Solion Wars, it will be a benefit. Um, as, you know, as Calvin said, we're working hard with the online ticketing company um, to make sure everything is right. Um, and all I say, if anybody does have any problems, you know, please feel free to, you know, to either call us, email us, or come and find me on match day. Um, you know, we are approachable. We want to help. We want to make sure that everybody's experience, you know, at games is right. Um, so for that, over the next couple of weeks, you, again, you will see an improvement on that, especially after today's launch about the online ticketing prices. Thanks very much indeed. Any other questions, by the way? I'll come out to you. Just we've got one over here, right? There we go. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, first of all, can I congratulate the board and the club for the tremendous work that they do within the community? Uh, you're doing valuable work at all ages, all genders, all disabilities, and it's something you should be very proud of. In fact, it's a template that ought to be copied from every football team in the land. Secondly, um, I know the directors occasionally meet with the Supporters Association uh, to delve and give uh, information on future plans and aspirations, and I think that's very good of you. But, and it's important, always important. Um, I would like the club or the directors to take one step forward. I believe uh, it would enhance this club tremendously if you had a supporter, a supporter representative at board level. The way I see it is we need you as directors with your business acumen and your financial clout. You need us supporters to come and put bums on seats and bring revenue into the club. I can only think it can only help everybody where when the directors have to make a decision who directly or indirectly affects fans and supporters. If there is consultation with a, a, a supporters rep on the board level, it can only make your decision uh, more in your decision, knowing the supporters' view. And I think it would be everybody's benefit. You say we're, we're all one, and I agree, that's how it should be. And I believe it would help you, and it certainly would help the supporters. Thank you. Daryl, perhaps you'd like to respond to that. It's a difficult one for me because <clears throat> if you're a director, and, and funny enough, we had a meeting with the Sports Association uh, before uh, the forum, and, the, and I, raised, I raised this subject up. I'm a huge fan of supporter representation. The problem if, if you're on the board is you have a statutory obligation as a director, so therefore you have a duty of care and confidentiality towards the club. So it's not, it's not as if you can go to a board meeting as a supporter and then tell everyone what's going on at the board meeting because it just flies in the face of trying to run the club professionally. Um, so I, I I am 100% willing to look at supporter representation because at the end of the day, I'm a fan. I want to get, you know, I'm, I've come into this 
as a labour of love. I want it to be successful, but it also needs to be fun. And I want Solid All Moors to be a bastion of success. I, I, you know, many thanks for what you said about what the club does in the community. The reality is that, that that's nothing to do really with Calvin and myself. That's down to Mike Turl, Mark Fogarty and the previous regime who I think have done a magnificent job in terms of promoting the club in the community and we now want to build on that to take it even <coughs> further. But in terms of supporter representation, I'm very happy to talk to Sports Association. Um, when I was at Oxford, as soon as I raised this issue as a possibility, there was no agreement about who that representative should be. Now, it might be easier at Solihull Moors, but as soon as you say there's supporter representation, it then becomes a bonfire as to who that supporter is. I think you'll, um, only, I think you'll only have one candidate. <laughs> 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 who is that? He walks around the ground every Saturday selling tickets. Um, <laughs> um, but I mean, but, but for me, I, the reality is that the, the, the wonderful thing about this club is that we've got our, our, our own future in our own hands. So we can forge that almost with a blank sheet of paper. And as Rich said five minutes ago, if people have got constructive suggestions as to how we do things better, um, we are completely open-minded because we're all working, particularly Calvin and I, for nothing. So, it's, so we are trying to improve this club in every way, shape or form we can. And we don't sit, if we do, if we do make a mistake, I honestly can say we're not sitting there saying, I'll tell you what, what can we do today to really piss off the supporters? <laughs> if we do it, it's, it's accidental. And, and for me, it's, it's much more about understanding we're actually all on the same side. And, and if there is a problem, we're looking for the solution. We're not trying to create problems. We are trying to effect quite a lot of change because if we are serious about getting into the league, the previous infrastructure was insufficient for us to qualify for league uh, registration. But more importantly, you've got to have the right foundations across the club. Now, change is ever present in the human psyche, but people don't like change. But the reality is there are certain things that we have to get better at if we're going to fulfil the true potential of this club. But as I say, I, I, I'm very happy, I mean, maybe we can pick it up afterwards about uh, talking about how supporter representation can be best effective in the context of Solid Wars. Thank you. While you've got the microphone, if, thanks to Tim and the players, Gary, it happens and you get out either this season or next season, are you, do you, are you aware of what has to happen to the ground? for you to be accepted, is that, is that something you've looked at? Um, I, 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 I'll come back to that, but, I, but I'll, first of all I'll say, promotion to League Two from the National League, first of all, we should all be campaigning for three up, because sure. it is an absolute yeah. travesty. <clears throat> The Football League pyramid now, for me, is the Premier League, it's the Championship, and then there's three leagues. There's League One, League Two, and National League, which I'd call League Three. And it is a daft, in my view, that there are not three up. You know, we're now fighting for one position to get automatic promotion, and then, then we've got some really convoluted playoff arrangement. Um, so. As fans, if we could all campaign to the National League and the Football League to get three up, I think that would... Because the teams that get promoted from the National League stay in the league. Yeah. I think it's 16 out of the last 20 are still in League One or League Two. And actually most of them double jump. Um, and I, I've got every confidence if we get out of this league, we can go again. <laughs> and, and, and funny enough, out of League, league, one, uh, league Two, there's four up. <laughs> and as I said, when I was at Oxford, I said to Michael, I said to Michael Upton, it's the easiest league to get out of. I don't think he took that the right way. <laughs> um, 
I forgot. I, forgot. I forgot. Do I know what we need to do if we get into the like, No, I don't, but I know a man who does. That would be Rich Blackmore. Rich, talk to us about if these gentlemen here get this team into the Football League, are you aware of what's going to happen? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, fortunately, um, obviously because of the, you know, the work and, and the efforts of, of the team and the management staff, we've got ourselves in a position where everybody in the playoffs um, up to Christmas have to apply for Football League membership. Um, that application had to be in by the 31st of December and was delivered successfully. Um, we then have our first round of feedback, which has already been back to us. Um, and then we have a second round of feedback, which then has to go back into the Football League for the 21st of February. Um, at the moment, um, we've got a full list um, of works, renovations and plans so that if the eventuality was to happen then yes we will be ready. That's good enough, we'll be ready, fantastic. That's great news though and it shows you that the club is ready and, and willing and able to get into the Football League. Let's go back to the, the skipper. It's been ever so serious hasn't it? <laughs> right, <Here we> skipper. <laughs> Who's the worst dressed player? Oh. Come on, who's gears minging? Well, to be honest with you, I was quite disappointed on the Christmas do because I looked all right. <laughs> Some of the boys hit with me. But I'm going to be honest, Luke, Luke Maxwell, I, I don't know what he's trying to do. Um, he's six foot seven, got the same colour hair as me, and he's wearing bright white trainers with skinny jeans. It's just, it's not a good match. It's not a good match. Um, yeah, he looked terrible, to be honest with you. So, Luke Maxwell for me. <laughs> Every dress room has a, what's the word I'm looking for? A, you know, a crackpot. You know, somebody who's a nutter. You know what I mean? Somebody who you think, oh no. Do I need to answer this? <laughs> I, think, I think we know who this is. <laughs> <laughs> Go on then, tell us. He's sitting over there. He's got, he's got, he's got the cap on over there. Though. One of our own. We got daily. <laughs> but they're important, aren't they? Oh, Keep yeah, the dressing room alive. Listen, he knows what the club's about. You don't play 250 games at this level uh, for no reason. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a you know he's a mainstay, he's a massive character for us. Um, you know when when he uh, when he shouts at you on the pitch, you do know about it. And I play just in front of him, so uh, I know more than most. Yeah. When you sign national league, is it the same as the football league? Do you have initiations? Um, we've not had initiations here because I think <laughs> when I come in January, I've started singing songs. I don't think. Uh, the gaffer or uh, Yates would have been too, too happy. So, um, you know, we've not had them. Um, it's been quite serious, to be honest with you. It's, uh, it, was, it was knuckle down time. Um, but usually, at every club I've been at, then I've done initiation. So, uh, what was your song? Uh, Robbie Williams, Millennium. <laughs> well, I'll pay money to hear that. Don't give it a start. It seems to be, Tim, they seem to be a hell of a bunch to manage. <coughs> Forget all the tactic side. They seem a good bunch to manage. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, Gaz touched on it. The football's about, obviously, ability and technique and whatever you want to do and what, what you, you guys see on the pitch on a Saturday afternoon. But it's also about people, men, uh, character, backbone. Call it what you want. And there's, a, there's always a mixture of different types. There's quiet ones, there's leery ones, there's lads who are funny, there's lads who sit and listen. And, and it's getting a balance and a, and a mix. Um, one of the first things I wanted to do um, when, when I took over was get, get a, a leadership group together. Um, now, I've been in dressing room or in the clubs before where they put that to the vote for us, but I, I think I, I looked at it and thought, no, I'm going to pick it myself because there's been some, some bad shouts uh, in the past. So, to be fair, Kyle and Liam and, and Darren, um, I pulled them in before the season. I said, listen, if anything untoward desperately happens, then I'll step in and and sort it out, but I want you to, to police it. I don't want any stupid tittle-tattle or you know, silliness coming to my door unless it's required. I've not had one, I'm nothing, I'm not to pull anything, anybody on any kind of misdemeanor or, or indiscretion whatsoever, which is fantastic coming into February. Uh, I'm not putting the mockers on that, so long, long may that continue. But there, and listen, they're, they're, I can hear them because the walls are paper thin where, where we get changed. So I know exactly what they're saying about me, but, um, they're, they're, uh, there's some, some funny men in there, there's some uh, 
they have a lot of a lot of good times I think together and that's the chairman said listen you, it's got to be fun as well you've got to want to come into work you've got to enjoy yourself you know there's take it from me there is no better way to make your living than come in and work physically hard every day as, as a football player you're one lucky man um, so I'm, I'm sure they all realize that but uh, there's also having that enjoyment side as well and I think we are where we are because of that uh, 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 you know, it goes a long way, a spirit, a commitment, a togetherness, and, and that's got us over the line a few times this season. Um, I couldn't be happier or prouder uh, of the bunch that we've got here, all of them, and some have been out on loan, some have played more parts than others, but that's football. But uh, as a group, they've been, they've been wonderful from start to finish, but now we've got to finish it. You notice that watching them, if, if you kick one, they all limp. I mean, that's the sort of team they are. Yeah, they are. I mean, they, they do, they stick together, and we've We've, you know, we've got smacked on the nose a couple of times, but we've never ever been out of a football match. Um, you know, some, sometimes you can be three, four, five down, uh, and, and you're out of the game. I can't remember uh, a, a match this season, um, really, where we've been out of it. Where you'd say, you know, if we don't, if we get the next one, it's game on. We, we've been in every single football match, and that's credit to the lads. And some, some we've won and probably deserve not to and others we've got beat and probably deserve something out of, but that's, again, that's football. Uh, but to be on um, 57 points after 31 games, yeah, you know, we, we're going at 1.8. One uh, you know, if we, if we maintain that, we, we're nailed to the playoffs. If we improve on it slightly, then we might be bad. Yeah. If we slip away, then we slip away. But I, I honestly, that's why we've constructed the squad we've constructed, because I don't think we will crumble. I don't think we will. A lot I've said about in the game about motivation, but it seems to me that uh, there are there's a lot of self-motivation. So if you create the right environment, they're all self-driven. Definitely, that's part of being a part of being a dressing room. In the end, <clears throat> excuse me, you don't you shouldn't really need a manager or a coach, in my opinion, as a footballer to motivate you. I'm being funny. If you rock up and you need me to stand over you and say, "Listen, come on," you shouldn't be here. You shouldn't be here. Listen, sometimes you will. You'll need directing, or you 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 need to understand what I want, but you shouldn't need fire in your belly. You know, you should be ready to come and play football. Um, that's your job. That's what you pay for, uh, and and that's the group I've got. You know, I don't really need to fire them up; they fire themselves up, um, and that's why it's important. Listen, I going back to what Gaz said about recruitment. I I could have twenty academy players in here in a heartbeat if I wanted. I could go and take anyone out of all the big clubs around here, and, uh, and they'd be able to come in on loan and probably subsidise. I don't want that. I want players who've gone course and distance at this level, who know this level, are man enough to stand up to the physicality of the division, because it is a, an unbelievable, it's almost old school, uh, you know, the, some of the things that are allowed to, to, to happen on the field is from 25, 30 years ago. Um, and and you, need, you need men who can, who can handle that. Um, now, we're not, I'm not stupid, obviously we, we, we've got a future, so there's got, there's got to be some youth coming through. We've got a very good academy, there's some good young players coming through in that. We've got one or two out on loan who are doing very well in, in the in the Eva Stick, etc., Southern Northern Prem. Um, and they'll be stepped up next year or even be around the squad. But uh, I, want, I want players and men who have gone course and distance in this league. I don't want to be going to Sutton United away on the AstroTurf uh, with a flaky bunch. And so I'm delighted with what I've got. It's quite interesting. Nobody doesn't mind me mentioning it. I sat with Tim a few times watching games before he joined the club. I sat with him watching games, he's doing a bit of scouting. and. And I listened to him talking about the team we were watching and about what he would do and all the rest of it. And to a word, it's exactly what you were talking about. You've done. So you, you, don't, you know what I mean? There's nothing changed. Your philosophies have been the same. Yeah. It, the chairman touched on style of play. And, and style's a player, I've heard a lot of... Uh, yeah, a little bit. I think there's an element of, of jealousy a little bit that Solly or Moores are where they are. I think one or two people have been taken mm. aback and they don't like it. I think they used to like to rock up here, tickle our tummies and go home with three points with us, not making too much of a murmur. And then days, make no mistake, are long gone, long gone. Um, this, this is a, a real tough place to come. And we're at the moment, in terms of form guide, we're top away from home over the last, I think, eight or nine games. We're top of the league away from home. So, you know, our away form's picked up dramatically. That was an Achilles heel for us a little bit in, in terms of the amount of points we get on the road. That's changed. Um, which tells you about the, the spine of the team, if you like. Um, our style of play, it, someone asked me, what, what's your mantra on football? It's, it's effective football. You can't play where there's no space. So if people want to squeeze up, where's the space in behind them? If they want to sit off you, where's the space? Well, then you can move it 
to put some quality in behind them and try and hurt them. You can't score. How many goals are scored? One touch in the box in the Premier League. Turn it on on a Sunday. How many are, are, are from 30 yards? Not many. You've got to get the ball in the box to score a goal. You've got people who are willing to get on the end of it. And then you've got to maintain attacks, recycle attacks and keep the pressure. Make sure people are pending. Make sure you're good at restarts. Because the ball's out of play 150 times in the National League game. So the message is, if you come to Solihull, if you want the points, you're taking the bruises as well then? Yeah, well, uh, listen, we, uh, you've got to be, I think you've got to be physical in this division to get out of this division. Look at the teams historically who've got out of this league. They haven't pretty their way out. Of the, you know, they haven't played like Barcelona to get out of this division. They've had to go man on man. Uh, and they've had to be brave in both boxes. They've been willing to put their bodies on the line. I think I've got a group that does that. I think we're, we're as well rehearsed and drilled on restarts. Our, our set plays are excellent. We've had a lot of success with them. We've conceded relatively few from them. Which is a key, a key element in any in any standard of football, but certainly in this, uh, when you consider how many times the ball is out of play or the player stopped in this league, which is a lot in, in a 60-minute game, if you like, because the ball's in play for 60 minutes, it's roughly about between 130, 150 times the ball's out of play. So you've got to make sure you can defend throw-ins, deal with corners, deal with wide free kicks, blah blah blah. <laughs> Gary, bring let's bring Gary in. Gary, I mean. You listen, you couldn't fail to want to play for him, could you, Tim, listening to him, get you at it. Gary, tell us about the, the manager and the inspiration from him then. Yeah, he's meticulous, I think, in what he does. He, you know, he, he lives and breathes the game every Saturday, every Tuesday. Uh, he's got a passion. I think the players can relate to that. He wants to win. Uh, he's got a fantastic background in football. So, yeah, you know, there's a, there's a lot to be said for the way he's about himself. To be honest, just moving on, me personally, I think from when you look back to last year when we was in trouble and the run we've had, I, I honestly don't think there's been enough praise for the players and the club. Because when you look at it, that's a fantastic achievement when you've got lads playing under pressure as they was then. It's a different pressure now, but I think the gaffer touched on the style and I said to him that I think a lot of it was because the clubs in this league couldn't deal with it and they wanted us to challenge, if you like, and start doing something different. But we say to the lads not, not to go off the script that's got us where we are. And, you know, a lot of that is down to the manager. You just heard it. And it's, it's effective. It wins games. we got Lincoln out of this division and now they look as though they're getting out of League Two. Um, I think we've got an identity, which some teams don't like um, because they haven't got an identity. So. All in all, yeah, that's, that's down to everybody here, the fans and the board, uh, and obviously the manager, that's his philosophy. If other teams don't like it, you're doing it right. 100%, yeah, that's, that's why they want you to change, yeah. And um, like I said, I don't think the lads really... I've been disappointed a lot in football because I'm a blue supporter, so I'm used to that. We can uh, relate to that. I'll honestly say that since I've been here seeing these lads... I think you can judge that sometimes if you come away and you think, well, I'm actually a little bit disappointed today with the lads. I think probably on one hand, since you could say, well, actually, we never turned up today. And that's, that's a massive thing for, for lads to keep churning that out week on week. Absolutely. Any questions? Because we're enjoying ourselves up here. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, can, we bring one, can we bring a couple of the players in? Okay. Is that all right with you, Tim? Daz, come and have a word. Darren Carter. Oh, he hates it, look. He hates it, look. How did he not qualify Kyle for the, for the deal? <laughs> Daz, you've played at, I think Kyle mentioned you've played at the highest level. So tell us, you're in, you've been in the Premier League. Tell us about the professionalism here now, you know, in your career as it is now. I think, um, obviously, I came in when Liam was manager a couple of years, well, sorry, 18 months ago now. Um, so I've seen the real progression, I think, from this football club going, like the gaffer said, from part-time to, to pretty much full-time. Um, you know, I've been very lucky in my career, as you know, Tom, to play for some great managers, some great clubs. Um, and to see the steps now into where we are, you know, the gaffer's already said it, but we're not too far away from being a, a, a fully professional club. So um, for me, at my stage of my career as well, to be involved with something like that and to be involved in the progression, um, you know, is, is so rewarding. Um, I'm obviously from the area. 
I've known the club since it was the you know, Solihull Borough and, and Moor Green. Um, so I've always had an affiliation here. But to, to see us now being close to, to the Football League um, is great to be a part of. You were in some great dressing rooms. Where does this relate? This dressing room? I'm good at this time, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, uh, I've worked with him for too long, so... Uh, I think, for me, every season is a different adventure, and for this group of lads to, to, be, to come in every day and, and enjoy training and enjoy each other's company, that's massive. You, you know, I don't think you can underestimate that, and what the success that can bring. I think, you know, even when we're off the field, we're laughing, we're joking, um, but as soon as we cross the line, it's, it's deadly serious. Um, I think you see that on the pitch. I think you've seen that from performances, especially this year. And the Gaffers, you know, and, and Gaz have said it, the recruitment, uh, the lads that have come into the building, everybody's on the same page. Everyone's pushing in the same direction. Everyone wants to, to achieve things. Um, and yeah, you know, we, we go through brick walls for each other. You and Kyle are in the dressing room. Are they good enough? And do they have the belief they can get out? Without a doubt, we're definitely good enough. That's um, no question. Um, the ability that we've got, again, probably reiterating what the, that's already been said, that we've got a, a blend of everything. Um, you know, youth, uh, which I'm glad about. Guys are running around for me in the field. Um, and stars, yeah, stars, stars, stars yeah, the, the other shift for me. Um, but no, like I say, we've, we've got pace, we've got power, we've got it built to, to get out of this league. So um, it's down to us as players to to put that out on the pitch and, and go and get the job done. But um, but yeah, the dressing room's great. And, you know, from, from my career, it's, it's definitely one of the better ones. Lovely. Thank you, Darren Carter. Thank you very much indeed, Darren. <laughs> so, does he take the penalties? Does he, ta does he take the penalties? Um, no. <laughs> Daz, what's going on? I can't believe it. The millennium, 17 years of age, how many was the crowd? What was in there? How many? 80,000. Oh. And you scored? It's, yes, you're, it, you're on a that player. penalty <laughs> at 17 won Birmingham City promotion to the Premier League. Yeah. Did it really? Yeah. I'm a commentary fan, I can't really follow Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> we won the FA Cup in 1987. Yeah, but to be fair, Tim, <laughs> you're old enough to remember when commentary <laughs> were a big club, aren't you? Yeah, very much so, yeah. <laughs> Division 1, we were in, I remember. Funny enough, 87, what a game. It was my first ever. FA Cup commentary, what a game that was, amazing. Um, but sorry on Moors, here we are. Um, we'd like some questions really, anybody got, oh we got one here, fabulous, there you go. Uh, we spoke a bit about the requirements to join the league, um, I'm just wondering what the plans are for the stadium, is it going to stay here or are you looking elsewhere, um, if you stay here you're going to build something on the opposite side of the pitch there, or what's happening? <laughs> Microphones red up, they're passing in between them. <laughs> that was quick, wasn't it? Um, well, the plans are to stay here, first and foremost. So, uh, categorically, we are looking to improve the facilities here. Um, I say Rich has done a lot of work on this, and uh, outside of the, um, you know, the, the papers that we produce for EFL, it's also about developing the stadium and enhancing this building uh, and looking at sort of stands for the other side as well. So it really is, I mean, in a nutshell, we're not planning to move. Others? Uh, right. What about uh, media coverage? Darrell, talk to us about media coverage, you know, expanding the media coverage, getting, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's... It's a lot of people have still got to come to terms, I think, in the media that some of are on, on a journey here. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's critical that, that we raise awareness and there's, there's no better way of doing that. And I, I, I know this guy doesn't like the limelight, but he's got me on his back saying, if the Daily Mail want an interview, could you please do it? <laughs> he wasn't too chuffed before the Blackpool game to have to go on TV 15 minutes before kick-off. But at the end of the day, we're not going to get in the shop window that, that often. And um, it is amazing how many people saw us on that Friday night on BBC Two and how much interest it's created just amongst people I know. Um, 
And I've now got sort of friends from all over the country that if, if, if they've got half an opportunity there, well, they will come and watch Tiger Moors. So for me, it's just gradual and sustainable building of that awareness and that interest. Um, and for me in life, the only thing you can do is look forward. What, what's gone has gone. Um, and it's trying to get that balance right. And, and, and I think Tim's hit the nail on the head. It's, it's got to be fun, but it's got to be serious fun. And it is about success. And, I, and Tom and I have talked before about whilst this is a bit of a sentimental journey for me and it's fun and, and, and all the rest of it, I'm probably as competitive a person as most people in the room. And we are not going to fail through lack of effort. You can't ever legislate for being successful in sports. But we do have a five-year vision to get ourselves into the league. I don't mind if you do it in Europe. <laughs> um, but the reality is we are trying to put the club on the map for the long term, not the short term. And even if we're still in the National League in five years' time and we haven't got promoted, I guarantee you we will have had a boatload of fun. I think I just the reason I'm, oh, I know so much about Dal is I used to work for him. Well, he owned our radio station, to be fair. So I know, just from that, that he will drag Solihull Moors into the league and be successful. I know it's going to happen. And that will, without any shadow of a doubt, and I'm totally confident in that. Sorry to put pressure on you. But, but I, know what he was like. I know what he was like with us. Um, Tim, you've got a cup game. Is it Saturday? Is it away at Hemel? Hemel Hempstead. Yeah, away in the trophy. Uh, in, the tro in the trophy. Now, the higher up the leagues you go, you see all sorts of things about cup competitions, play weekend teams, they do this because they've got the focus on leagues and all sorts. Where do you sit with that? Is, is this a, a cup competition you take seriously and can you win it? Definitely take it seriously. Uh, every, even the Birmingham Senior Cup, we took that seriously. I've got every trust in every player in my squad. They're not here because I just want to make up the numbers in my squad so I've got a nice little roster that looks good in the, in the programme. I've got their ear to play. So whatever field, uh, team I field at, at Hemel uh, is going out on the field to win. Uh, and we'll have the same philosophy as any team that wears the colours. We'll play the same way. Um, uh, we'll, have, we'll have watched, as we have done, we'll, we'll do a, a pre-match presentation on, uh, or we've done a pre-match presentation on, on Hemel today in this room. The lads have seen what they've got, the strengths, their weaknesses, their personnel, their set plays, their shape, everything. They're shaping the last three games. We, we've done all that. They know what to expect. They know who they're up against. At the moment, they don't know who's playing. Um, I've picked, every, whether we've gone to Witten, Hitchin, uh, wherever we've gone, um, Coventry, United here in the Birmingham, I've picked a team to try and win the game. I've picked a team to try and win at, at Hemel. I take every co every competition seriously. I can't understand why, before the season kicks off, you can possibly win three trophies in our division. You can win the FA Trophy, the FA Cup, or the League. Why would you possibly want to custom play one of those? I can't catch my breath. So we go we go for try and win everything we can. If we fall short, we fall short. For trying to How refreshing is that? I wish I'd have recorded it and sent it to Guardiola. I'd have loved it. <laughs> he has got a 50 man squad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good point, one mate. Yeah. Just to the players, Carl, do the players, do they get a, a different buzz with the cup coming up? Or the trophy? Oh, uh, well, the, the, the buzz is Wembley. Um, we've got you know, a couple of the lads, Good Juro over there. He won it last year at Brackley. Um, obviously, he was the underdog going into that, the big problem in the final. Um, and Danny Wright, he's, he's won it with Wrexham. Um, you know, and it's a great day out, like they say. Um, I, I went there, but I was cup tied with Wrexham, so it was a, and we lost, so a bit of kicking the teeth. Um, so if you'd yeah, have played, what he's saying, of course, if he'd have played, <laughs> well, you would have lost three now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it, it's you know as they've described, it's a great day out, and obviously going to Wembley, it's uh, it, it, you know, it's probably the pinnacle, mm -hmm. and obviously getting the trophy would, would be great. But like Gaff said, we've got a squad, um, it's a squad game, and you know everyone's good enough to play the weekend, and you know we're, we're, we're aiming to win the trophy. Interesting, Tim, though, that you mentioned there, you've, you, have all, you have a team's watched. I mean, that's a very professional attitude, isn't it, to have that much detail on the opposition? Yeah, I mean, we've got, I suppose every manager or staff have got their own uh, format, the way they do it. I would say 
almost without doubt that every team in this division has their opposition watched. Um, we've now got, one, two, I think we've got five scouts. Uh, last year we had none. In, in essence, we had none. So last year I, I would watch three, the last three games on Y Scout, and I would watch the opposition. I'd write my own reports down in the AT and we'd, we'd sort it out like that. Now I've got, so we've had Hemel co uh, covered, we've got Ebbsfleet covered Saturday. Um, I've already had a report on them, so I've got, I'll have two going into that one. I would also watch, so listen, we, we've got the heads up on what we're up against, but so is everybody else. Listen, we're not a secret either. Everybody knows who's going to play for us, in what position. We might change one or two, but pretty much know what they're up against. It's just finding, it's fine margins. So that's where strength and conditioning, food, um, the way you travel, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, all those things. I know it sounds silly. We just had 25 lots of thermal, the, the thermal gear for the lads are tights. And the, and the, and the, so we never had that to, you know, for the warmth, for the recovery. We've got recovery pants, I think, coming on now. Everything that you can possibly have for the bus. We, we're trying to get just for that little end that, detail. Yeah, that just might make that difference. Uh, when push comes to shove in April. Where does this sit? I mean, you've had a wonderful career in the game. Where does Solly Moore sit in your career? Because you look like you're enjoying yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. Listen, football's... Uh, I, I left school at 16 to go to Wolves. That's, that's, what, that's, what, that's all I had. That's what I was going to do. It was in my brain, you know, my mum and dad were saying, get your O-levels, their O-levels back, and your O-levels and your A-levels. And I got a couple, but it wouldn't have been enough to sustained me on what I wanted to become a rocket scientist. Um, so I decided to go into goalkeeping and um, to be fair, I said, very <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and that's been my life ever since. Um, so th this football club um, has been absolutely wonderful in the last, since I've been in whatever it is, nearly 18 months, come to 18 months. It's, it's the, the turn, right, just to see the turn round in everything, on and off the field, that the, the standard of play on the field, the, the um, standard of uh, everything we've touched on um, in terms of being prepared to play a National League game, and as the chairman rightly says, it is League, league 3, League 5, what you want to call it. It, is the, it is the next professional league now under League 2. Um, and to see the increase in the support, because there is, there is an increase. I mean, the last home game, that was what I came out, and you look around, over 1,500 people here is, is, is wonderful. To see the, the gate against Wrexham here, against Blackpool, the atmosphere, the TV, the following we've had now, the increase in the away support. Um, I remember I seeing a big cluster of bodies at Hitching in the away, you know, in non-league people can still stand together, all, all mixed in together. Seeing now when we go to places like Barnet, when we went to, to Maidenhead, the support we're getting and the, the elation with the last minute win. I think it's, it's, it's been a wonderful journey so far. And the gentleman just there said about, um, what's the word? Not, not overachieving, but sort of don't, don't get bitten by overachieving. Listen, whatever happens this season will have no bearing on it. My job is to try and improve what we've got for next season. And, and I'm, we're already looking at that. We're already looking at, 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 at the recruitment and the retain, who we're going to retain, etc. Et That's already being done. Pre-season's already being planned in the back of my head. So we're very much moving forward. Um, and to see what we've come from to what we are now has been monumental in my opinion. I think we'd all agree it's been fantastic, hasn't it? Yeah. Wonderful. Have we uh, got Mr Flowers under a long contract? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. And I mean, first question, have you got a contract? Yeah, oh yeah, I've got a contract. <laughs> but I mean, you've seen the, the respect I think Daryl has for him. So I, I, I think... That's almost an unwritten contract there, isn't it? A long-term thing, a long-term... Because you're in it together, aren't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, listen, we, we've had many discussions uh, since, since Daryl came in. Um, you know, listen, I, I could have not got this job when Mark went. You know, Mark, Mark went to Mac, got a chance to go back into the Football League, and quite rightly so, because um, he's an excellent manager. Listen, I, I could have got bumped off, you know what I mean? But the, the board decided to go on, and let, let's see what you've got. Um, so, you know, I was given a chance. Um, so, I've got no qualms. We, we've got plans. We want this club to go. In. It's, not, it's not a secret. We want to go into the Football League. So, and that's, that's the aim. And there's a strategy behind it. There's a plan behind it. It's not, I'll tell you what, let's just go into the Football League, shall we? we you know, we, we know what we want to do, how we're going to get there. And it's not going to be like some try. There is going to be some method behind it. And um, 
uh, and it'll be slowly, slowly catch the monkey, but I think we will. So it's not just getting in, Chairman, and, and two, it's not just getting into the Football League and being, because anybody, not anybody, but teams can get up and come back down. What you're saying is, you're not going to be a visitor, you're going to get up and stay up. Oh, absolutely, because I, 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 as I say, I think, I think there is a mini-league structure, League 1, League 2, National League, you know. I think the, the difference between teams in League 2 and the National League is pretty minimal. Um, and then even the teams that get from League 2 to League 1 generally hold their own. The thing that, that, that binds us in sort of a funny sort of way is we're both mega analytical. So we tend to deal in facts as opposed to bullshit. Um, which is That's a coaching term, by the way, I'll just let you know that. Um, and, and, you know, I, one of the things I do love about, the, about Tim, Gary, Quinney, is they watch the same game as me. So they're not people who, you know, we weren't, you know, we win, what was it, Barrow? Yeah, yeah. the way, yeah. You know, we just go, we're lucky. In the same way as we were unlucky on Saturday. And one of the things, and we're all football fans, the, the, the reason football is the best game in the world, it is, is a, it is a low scoring game. Therefore, on any given day, Still in football, the underdog can win. In virtually every sport now, in virtually every other sport now, that can't happen. Rugby union, the best team wins. Just and you know, if you play an underdog, will lose by sixty points to a good side. And it's the same in virtually every other professional sport now, apart from football. And that's why it is an absolutely wonderful game. Um, I think our relationship is as good as it possibly can be. The, the key thing for me in any football club and I, is stability of personnel. Get the personnel right. He's, Tim's got Gary, he's got Quinny. I think that backroom team is superb. They're supported by a bunch of other people. I think Green Craig Coping has been a fantastic addition. Um, and stability, consistency, is absolutely fundamental to any football club. And I, I still, the one thing I still don't understand, and again coming back to statistics, is there is absolutely no empirical evidence that changing the manager improves results. Absolutely. Very often in the Football League, it just gets the fans off the chairman's back for a while, that's all. <laughs> um, well, I shouldn't have said that to him, should I? Um, <laughs> I'll get my coat. <laughs> one of the things that shines through to me as an outsider, the, the one word that sticks in my mind about Solly or Moore's is honesty. There's an honesty, as Tim has explained in his players, honesty between the coaches and the players, honesty between the, the board and the manager and the chairman and the man. So honesty seems to be the key word. How important, Tim, is honesty and trust? Well, it's my, listen, there's no point in me coming in after the game and saying to the chairman, well, I thought we were lucky there, I thought we were different. When patently we haven't, we've been poor, or we've not been good enough, or patently we need a couple of players, or whatever it is. You know, I can't understand blokes that come out and, and <laughs> well, I can because it's pressure, I guess. Yeah. But the, the, what's, you can't pull a wool over people's eyes. Supporters sit there and they can see the game. So why come out and say I thought we were excellent when we were poor? Because I, I don't go in and hide it from the boys. And I've very rarely had to go in this season and go, oh, listen, we weren't at it today. That's not whatever. That's not good enough. Very rarely have I had to do it. But I'm not going to sit, stand there and, and, and feather bed them. Do you know what I mean? I'll yeah. tell them how it is or how I see it. Now, I watch the tape of our game every Sunday, win, lose or draw, and I review it. And sometimes I'll come in and have a pop, and then I'll look at the tape and think, well, I've been a bit wrong there. Even though, you know, some, I thought we played the right. And other times, I thought we played well. And actually, we've not been, I thought, oh, well, we've actually been worse than I thought. Sometimes when you review things at leisure, you see it slightly differently. Not all the time, but sometimes. But uh, honesty is a key element. Listen, if they don't trust me, we're in trouble. If Gaz don't trust me, we're in trouble. Um, you know, if, if I don't trust Daryl and the board, <laughs> we're in trouble. We're all on the same hymn sheet. We all know where we want to go. We're all pushing in the same direction and driving to get there. And eventually, we will get there. Let's go back to the captain. Let's go back to the dressing room. I love the dressing room stories. So, in, <laughs> who chooses... Who chooses the music for the dressing room? 
Well, this has been quite a long debate. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, the, the music's terrible, I'll be honest with you. It's out of use of, um, Oh, that's... It, it's not all that rap stuff, is yeah, it? Yeah, it's, oh, it's all right. the rap, but, you know, yeah. it's, it's get out of closet. Right through rap. Since he's actually been winning games, so it's like... One letter short, isn't it, really, yeah, rap? Yeah. <laughs> um, Ryan Book sits in the corner and he keeps saying to saying, he starts getting your music, I've got no Wi-Fi or got no data on my phone, so uh, it has to be out of use. Um, but no, yeah, the, the music's the music's poor, but we've been winning, so it's uh, we, we've got to keep it, I suppose. So, uh, tell us a little bit about your players, just just a little bit about them. Who do you want to know? Anything, really, who's, you know, for example, who's who would be a Britney Spears fan? <laughs> Spice Girls. Most of us, probably. <laughs> uh, Spice Girls, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a Spice Girl. I'm Victoria Beckham. She was the one for me. Obviously. But I know uh, Dale. You obviously don't like happy women, then, do you? Dale, Dale he likes uh, Jerry Alliwell. He's he out of the all the time, so I think he's still got the posters on his bedroom. <laughs> Brains of the outfit. It's got to be Carts and George Carline. They're the brains of the outfit. Oh, they're the, they're the brain. If yeah. Carts is your brains, you've got a problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he's, 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 sens he's sensible and, he, and, and George is quite clever and quite smart. Um, but the rest of us, are, I think we fall all, all on the same uh, same page. The, Ozzy, Ozzy hit the brains. Ozzy. <laughs> <laughs> Ozzy, Ozzy's the tea maker. He makes a nice, nice coffee and tea every morning. Well, who is that? Because there is always one in your dressing room that's like slow. Slow. We've got a few of them. I, I don't want to say thick, but you know what I'm saying. They don't know what... Slow like, pace or mine. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got a few, but uh, can I really pull them out? Yeah, of course. Dig them out. Uh, all right, OK, we'll go. Um, Luke Maxwell, definitely. He's, um, yeah, he's not the sharpest. Uh, uh, Addy's in there. Addy, Addy Yusuf's in there. It'll be a happy good contest between them two. Um, but, yeah. I can't dig out too much on that. Who wants to be a millionaire? You can imagine, can't you? Um, but the reason they can talk like that about each is because of the team spirit. That's the only reason he could do that. Because if there wasn't great team spirit, he couldn't say anything. And that says a lot about it to me. The team spirit is amazing. Has anybody ever mentioned Daz's hair? No. I'm only asking. Yeah, I'm asking for a friend. Like David Seaman, but... I'm asking for a friend. Who's on that one, Marty Pello? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, there's the one. Come on, Carlos, get to the line. Get to the line. <laughs> um, any other questions? Because I think we're just about done then, really. We can all return to the bar, I think. But No, listen, it's been... I hope you appreciate the honesty from everybody at the, the top level. We'll just get one... Final thing, just from all along, just for the fans, starting with the captain, just a little message about whatever you want to say. Listen, uh, we really appreciate support, uh, home and away. It really drives the boys on. Um, you're definitely the 12th month for us. Um, so if we can continue your support, it'll be great. Brilliant. Yeah, I'd reiterate that. Um, I'd also say that I think hopefully you've noticed um, an improvement on and off the field. I think, I think certainly... Uh, since I've been involved at the football club when I came in with Mark, I've seen a huge growth uh, off the field of play as the, as the chairman as, as put the, and Barney have mentioned the car park, the, the, the offices that are getting built, the improvements to the ground. Um, I, I honestly believe, well, I, don't believe I, know, I know we've improved as a football side. I know we're better to watch. I know we're certainly a more, a more winning side if you want to put an Americanism to it. We, we, we found a way to win football matches. I found a way to get this super football club up near the top of the uh, National League. We fully intend to stay there. We're giving it our level best to stay there. And hopefully we can try and deliver what, what you guys want come April. Okay. We'll leave the chairman until last year, aren't we? So Gary, just a, a word from you from the coaching side. I just think, as I said earlier, what's been achieved in, I don't know, 18, probably 15, 18 months now is, has been fantastic. And everybody, all the support has been a massive part of that. So be proud of it. Kelvin? Yeah, I think um, the other things I would like to add is, uh, as I say, the support of the fans has been brilliant and you know, long may it continue. We are working with the, um, the, the fans associations and really trying to make that work. As I said, we had a meeting with them earlier talking about ideas, how we can get fan engagement to help. And, you know, we need to sort of really sort of focus on that as well. I'd, I'd like to say a, a couple of quick things, if I may. Uh, you talk, touched on media earlier. And, and it is important that as a club we raise our profile. And I have to say, I'd like to say a big thanks to Luke. 
who sits there in the corner working on his laptop every match day, every day, and, and like tonight, the social media we've got is comparable to anything that's in the Championship or the Premier League. It's absolutely fantastic. And I, I urge everybody to look at it, like it, share it, all that sort of stuff, because that's the way we'll promote the name around the place. And also, we, we didn't really get a chance, but um, there's a few extra faces here today who have actually joined the board um, and joined the investors um, in terms of the club. And as I say, it's strengthening the team off the pitch. So they're all stood up there. Give them a name, Jake. Yeah, yeah so they'll say. Do you want to, actually, if you wouldn't mind, just five minutes, would you take the uh, mic over to Mike over to start off with Paul and he can uh, introduce himself and uh, pass it along? All right, here we go. Paul? Thank you. Hi, I'm Paul Rivers. I'm a Silhillian by birth and by upbringing. Blues fan as well, so long-suffering like many in the room. But it's just so great to be involved with my local team and let's just hope we can get where we want to be. Thank you. Brilliant. <laughs> Next, here we are. Uh, ben Brown, um, recently joined as finance director. Um, worked with uh, Daryl and some of the rest of the team at Oxford United as well previously. Um, saw all the great improvements that the team made at Oxford as well, and want to bring the same scholar as well. Brilliant. Another one? Yes, oh, here we are. Thanks, Tom. I was at school with Paul, so fellow civilian, fellow Blues fan sufferer, but uh, no, Adam Rhodes, and also Burn, delighted to be involved. Terry's godfather's one of my children, so I'll pass the microphone to him. <laughs> uh, hi, Terry Gregan. Uh, I run a business locally. Um, been involved in um, um, civil engineering, which is not going to interest anybody here. Uh, got involved in this through a mutual friend who's also an investor and a friend of others myself. And hopefully we're going to be here for the journey as well. And it's been great so far. Uh, evening everyone, David Buick. Um, I've been living in Solihull since I was 10. Um, to be given an opportunity to be part of a football club, being a big football fan, is a dream come true. And uh, I will give it my very best. Uh, I run a business locally in Solihull, uh, supplying bathrooms and heating and um, equipment like that. So I have lots of plumbers that I'm trying to get to come and, and support the club. Uh, and I've got a bit of success with that. There's probably about 10 extra ones have come so far, which is not a lot, but at least, uh, at least it's a start. Um, it's, uh, yeah, well, hopefully we'll be able to help out on that. Um, but again, you know, do our best. I think the team's done absolutely fantastically so far, and I, I can't wait to get to get going. Uh, I've been to about 20 games now, home and away. Some on the coach, and I've joined the supporters club. So, you know, I'm doing my best. Brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. Anybody else? Is that the lot? Sorry, we got someone else. Sorry. Is that it? Okay. Where is he? Where's Tim? Oh, there you are, Tim. Hi, everybody. Yeah, um, moved back to the area uh, fairly recently. My, uh, my dad was born on Damson Lane, so I uh, was in a pub in Dorridge and uh, met Mr. Mike Till, and uh, <laughs> he's the reason I'm here. And uh, moved back to the area and said, "Look, Mike, I'm prepared to uh, get involved in the Moors now because you know my dad was born in Damson Lane and." Thank you, the gravel most of his life, which is just up the road. And um, I think the thing that did it for me was I've got two young boys, and I brought them here against um, Boreham Wood. And the irony about it all was the owner of Boreham Wood is works in the TV, the TV and film industry, which is what I do. And um, you know all the people that I knew, and that was a common denominator. But then my boys went down onto the pitch, which Mark Fogarty, I don't know if he's here, but you know testament to him, he, he took them down and um, went to the dressing rooms and you know, onto the pitch and, and, and back into the boardroom. And you know, they're four and eight and their faces when they came up just said it all for me. And I thought, I need to be involved in this. It's grassroots football. I've played at an half decent level myself, not at the same standard of these boys, but I was, I was semi-pro back in the day. I've got some real good friends that are in the game. Gavin Barn, if anyone knows him, and Liam Lawrence, Neil McKenzie, all real good close friends of mine. And, um, you know, it's all about grassroots. Um, unfortunately, I'm an Aston Villa fan. So uh, I'm, I'm the reason that Ian Taylor and Lee Hendry came here and uh, 
we were at the FA Cup, and as I say, I'm, I'm proud to be involved. I'm born and bred Solihull, and I just you know appreciate Mike, Cheryl, you know, and, and everybody else, Daryl and uh, Calvin for getting me involved. That's it. Thank you. Good to see Mike here as well. Good to see Mike. Wow, that's a board and half. Brilliant. So the final word, Chairman. First of all, can I just say thank you to Tom for giving up his time, uh, brilliant as ever. So thanks, Tom. Um, I think most people have said everything that I wanted to cover, and I, the, only, the only thing I would add is that, that the danger with football is you look too far ahead. And the one thing I would urge us to do is that I think we, we, we've definitely got team of people and a plan that can be delivered over a five, ten year period. And the club has a sustainable business model and a bunch of shareholders that are in it, in it for the long term. But the most important thing in life for me, and, and it's business <coughs> or, or anything you do, is to enjoy the moment. We are having an incredible run. I pinch myself the, the team and the players and the coaching staff have done such a remarkable job. We might have a little blimp, doesn't matter. We lost on Saturday, but we fight again the next game. The great thing about sport is there's always the next game. I'd be really, really surprised if we're not in the mix come the last four or five games. I think the late Norian game on Easter Monday could be mega. So, don't book any holiday around. <laughs> um, but just enjoy it game by game and try and encourage your friends to come. Um, but just, can I just thank everyone for coming this evening. Uh, and I also thank these guys, you've been amazing. Thanks to the other players who've given up their time. Um, I think the club is in fantastic shape, um, but it's up to all of us to continue that and give Tim and the boys the best support we can. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tim. Thank you, everybody. Wherever you're home, heading home, have a safe journey home. By the way, the snow hasn't arrived yet. Tommy's not going to either. <laughs>